Minister, today I want to talk to you about Ivy. Ivy was born with cerebral palsy and also suffers from hip dysplasia and neuromuscular scoliosis. In 2016, when she was 13, Ivy was told she would need to have spinal fusion surgery at Temple Street. At that point, the curvature in her spine was 30 degrees. Years passed, but there was no surgery. As the curve in her spine increased, Ivy endured excruciating pain and discomfort. Unlike other teenagers, she was unable to meet her friends and socialise. By 2019, her deteriorating health meant she was only able to attend school for one day a week. On occasion, her condition was so bad, she wasn't able to breathe. Minister, think about that for a moment. A child in this country waiting so long for surgery that she's left in horrific pain, denied an education, and on occasion, even being able to breathe. Imagine being the parent of that child, watching her suffer for years and feeling utterly helpless and utterly hopeless. Minister, in Ivy's case, it was 2021 before she finally got her surgery. By then, the curve in her spine had increased from 30 degrees to more than 135 degrees. The Children's Ombudsman has released a damning report about Ivy's care today, detailing the delay in treatment and lack of communication from the hospital. But Minister, I was struck when I read the report that Ivy, despite all the trauma and pain she endured, was thinking of others. She expressed her gratitude and appreciation to the medical staff at the hospital. She said she knew they have a difficult job and are finding it hard to fulfil their responsibilities to children and young adults like her. Minister, desperately sick children and their families are being failed, not because of medical teams, but because of a lack of resources. In 2016, we first heard promises from then Minister for Health, for Health Harris that no child with scoliosis would wait longer than four months for treatment. That promise was never kept. Ivy waited for five years. As of May, there were 309 children waiting for scoliosis treatment. Alarmingly, we learned earlier this month that complex spinal surgeries for children with spina bifida at Temple Street have been paused since last year. Minister, I have a number of questions. When did the pause in surgeries at Temple Street commence? How long will surgeries be suspended for? How many children are impacted by this? How long have those children been waiting for surgery? When will the fifth operating theatre at Temple Street that was supposed to be completed last year be ready? When will the commitment to provide scoliosis treatment within four months actually be kept? Thank you, Deputy Curtis. Minister. Uh, thanks very much for, for raising this, uh, Deputy Cairns. And uh, indeed, the experience of Ivy is one which is harrowing and, and absolutely unacceptable, and one that we in government want to work uh, to ensure is not the case or the experience for, ch for children in this, in this country. Um, last year, Minister Donnelly approved a, a plan, an ambitious plan uh, from Children's Health Ireland to reduce the number of children waiting for spinal orthopaedic procedures uh, for scoliosis or spina bifida by the end or by year end. And as part of that, there was 19 million euro of current and capital funding committed to implement the plan. And we did make progress over the course of last year. As of the end of the year, there had been 509 scoliosis procedures carried out compared to 380 um, for the same period um, the year before, a 34% increase and an increase of 47% um, co compared to the previous year. CAPA completed 549 non-complex orthopaedic surgeries and 68 surgeries for spina bifida patients transferred from CHI, exceeding the target of 61 for the year. Despite undertaking a record number of spinal procedures in 2022, um, however, Deputy Cairns, corresponding reductions in the waiting list were offset by what was increased demand and referrals compared to previous years with a 30% increase in additions to the spinal surgery list compared to 2021. Um, the Children's Hospital believes that this is due to a loss of additional capacity elsewhere and also the challenge in terms of the COVID-19 and its impact on demand. And the uh, Children's Hospital has developed in Telma Street a plan for 2023 to continue and build on the work that it did last year. 
By the end of May this year, the Children's Hospital in Temple Street and also the National Orthopaedic Hospital in Capita have completed 171 spinal procedures, which is 6% up on the same time last year and represents 36% of the 2023 target activity. And 103 spinal procedures have also been undertaken in the same period, um, which is 43% of targeted activity. I know you've raised in Pacific the Children's Ombudsman's report in relation to, to IEV um, uh, here this morning, uh, Deputy Cairns. And the Children's Hospital have advised that it fully accepts the report from the Ombudsman uh, for Children in Office and it has developed an action plan to address these recommendations. That investigation, as you pointed out, centering on the case of Ivy, who was 18 years at the time of uh, the complaint in 2021 and had been waiting for spinal fusion surgery for scoliosis for five years since 2016. That's something unacceptable that any child has that experience and that start to their life. That's something that this government is taking real significant steps, which I've just outlined, to try and address the situation. And it's something we will continue to build on um, and ensure that this absolutely essential service uh, for people that have had this experience in their life and need the support of our health services, you, um, that those services can be availed of and that they are available and that the capacity to deliver them is significantly increased. Deputy Holly Kearns. Thank you, for, thank you for your reply, Minister. Um, the problem is that children with scoliosis is, and their families have heard all of these assurances before. Like I said, in 2016, they were told that no child would mate um, for more than four months for treatment. Um, and I think it's just quite frankly disgusting that in a country as wealthy as Ireland, we have children who are effectively being tortured like this. Um, the curve in Ivy's spine increased by more than 100 degrees over the time that she was waiting for surgery. It's almost impossible to imagine that kind of trauma being inflicted on a child, and Ivy's not alone. There are children all over the country who are in pain now, waiting for surgery. They're missing school, and they're missing out on socialising with their friends. Childhoods are fleeting, and their childhoods are passing them by. They don't know when they'll get surgery, and they desperately need it now. Um, Minister Scoliosis Ireland does hugely important work for these children and their families, and they're not just worried about their, their physical health in these scenarios, they're worried about their mental health. Um, the mental health supports for these children who suffer terribly are almost non-existent. So whilst you know, these assurances will hopefully be kept and all of those things you mentioned will be worked on, what assurances can you give parents that their mental health in the interim will be looked after? And when you speak to the Minister for Health, there may be extra measures to be taken in relation to this issue for mental health supports. You know, I, I certainly will speak to the Minister for Health further on the, on the issue of mental health supports, um, Deputy Cairns, but like yourself, I've met many young people who have been affected by scoliosis and the massive challenge that it has in their lives. And it is heartbreaking for all of us uh, to see them waiting uh, for the operation which will significantly change the course of their life and provide them the support and intervention that they need. And it's something that the Government, uh, as I've outlined in, in my earlier answer, are taking very seriously. Um, and are significantly increasing the capacity to ensure that the amount of people that are working in this service and the amount of uh, operations that can be done every year is significantly increased. As I said, last year, by the end of last year, there have been 509 scoliosis procedures carried out nationally, which was 34% um, um, up on the year before. We need to see that um, momentum and capacity significantly increased so that other children don't have the experience that Ivy has, but I absolutely acknowledge there are many young children in this country and young, young teenagers and young adults waiting for this operation. It is our objective and mission and work here in government to actually work to ensure that they can get that as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you.